Well, good day, folks. Uh, Jason here. Um, I live in, as you know, I live in a place called Medicine Hat, Alberta, and we're one of the very few places in Canada that does not have a mask by law yet. Now, um, what the news is saying is if our infection numbers keep on going up uh, in the next two weeks, they will institute a mask by law. And uh, if there's a mask by law, then of course I'll wear one. Uh, and I get that from um, Romans 13. And we'll go into Romans 13 in just a bit. We're going to be jumping around Romans 13, Romans 10, uh, Hebrews 10, uh, and talk about a little bit of church history. But um, in the church that I go to, we are back to two services. Uh, we are trying to obey the government uh, in, in a way that is still pleasing to Christ. Um, but I know that in other churches, in our town and throughout uh, the world, Christians still are not meeting together because of fear of COVID. Um, and I, I wanted to address that. And uh, first thing is Romans 13. Let me read to you the first half of the chapter. Now, um, I'll read it to you and then I'll give you the historical context to it. Okay. It says, uh, let every person be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except from God. And, that, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed. And those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is a servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection not only to avoid God, God, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. Okay, so we've got that. Now, hermeneutics—that's uh, a fancy term for um, how to study the Bible. Uh, I I uh, subscribe to a historical grammatical uh, hermeneutic, which means uh, you have to look at it grammatically. And what did it mean to the original readers? And when you find out what it meant to the original readers, you can uh, take out the principle from that. So at this time, Nero was emperor of Rome. Pretty bad guy. Um, hated Christians. In 64 AD, uh, Nero had a part of Rome burnt down so he could expand his palace and he blamed it on the Christians. Uh, hated Christians so much that he would throw them into the lion's den or into the Colosseum, uh, be mauled by lions. Uh, he would also impale them alive on, uh, on big wooden stakes, uh, cover them in pitch in his, and stand them up in his garden and light them on fire for his garden parties. He hated Christians, and yet this tells us to be in subjection to him. Um, there is a limit that we must adhere to, though. And I want to go back to Romans 10, 9 and 10, because there's a lot of confusion on this. And when, when I say confusion, I, I'm going to say misunderstanding. That's a better a better term. And Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? Again, we have to look at the historical context of this. So at any time, the Roman soldiers could come around and they would have incense 
and a little fire going. And they would command you to come on over, take some incense, and throw it in the fire and say, Caesar is Lord. That's all you had to do. Caesar is Lord. And um, then you'd be on your way. Christians couldn't do that. Because Caesar is not Lord. Jesus is Lord. And to say that Jesus is Lord in that context meant that at the very best you would be thrown into jail medium you'd be put into the Colosseum to be executed by a gladiator or wild beasts or you'd just be beheaded right there and so to say Jesus is Lord meant you would be defying the government on pain of death. Tough things. So, Jesus trumps Caesar, but it could cost you your life. And I want to take a look at Hebrews 10 25. We'll uh, start in verse 24. And it says, And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more, as you see the day drawing near. And that day is capitalized, means judgment day, the day of when Christ returns to, to judge the earth. So, the government, yeah, we should be submitting. But when it comes to what God commands, we do not submit. Now, church history tells us that, especially 1st, 2nd, 3rd century, Christians were hunted down. Um, by the 2nd century, uh, Every piece of scripture was almost eradicated. Christians would still meet together, though, but they would hide in catacombs. And what are catacombs? They are caves that held corpses. Can you imagine meeting in secret in a dark place that stunk the stench of death? All of the bacteria and grossness down there in order just to meet together and worship God. And yet, we have Christians that are scared to go to church and to risk a 0.05% chance of death. Now, here's another situation that we learned from church history. As plagues would come through Rome, um, the Romans were very superstitious people. And if their children got sick, they thought that it was a spirit, and they would not only kick the child out, but they would take him to the septic fields. Now, Rome had uh, an open septic system where it would just run out and there would be streams of raw sewage and they would throw their children in there. And it was the Christians who would wade into the septic fields and grab those children, clean them up, risk that disgusting mess that would carry disease, clean up these children, and raise them as their own. And yet, here we are, scared to go to church, because the media has got people so scared over a virus that has a 0.05% death rate. 
Now let's say, now I have a friend that has passed away from COVID uh, the last two weeks. I have another friend and he, he, both of these are Americans. I have another friend that had COVID and uh, he's got blood clots in his lungs because of it. I'm not saying this virus isn't real. I'm saying it is real, but the death rate is very low. I have another friend who's an American that used to live in Canada, and all three of these used to live in Canada. And he, uh, my friend lives about 20 minutes, half an hour from where I used to pastor in Texas. And he's got COVID and he says it's worse than the flu. It will knock you down. So it's a pretty brutal flu. Don't get me wrong. But what's the worst thing that's going to happen to you as a Christian? You will be ushered into the presence of Christ, the person who you've been worshiping. You get to see him face to face. That's the very worst thing that can happen to you. And we have Christians in Rome back in biblical times and first centuries, one, two centuries after, that were hiding in catacombs to worship Christ together. They were walking into septic fields, risking their lives to save children upon threat of disease. Just some food for thought here, guys. Are we forsaking the meeting together out of fear of seeing Jesus? Food for thought. Have a good day.